Okay, it is Wednesday, July 14th, 2021, 9.34 a.m. Calling Hubbard County Attorney Jonathan Frieden. County Attorney's Office, this is Sherry. Hi, Sherry. How are you doing today? Good. How about you? Super. Can't complain on an overcast, cruddy day like today. I was wondering if your county attorney, Jonathan Frieden, was in the office today. Uh, he's on another line. Is it a case that he's working on? Or? No, it's a Chapter 13 data request. I'm getting some uh, oh. harassment over from the sheriff, and I also submitted, uh, okay. a, submitted it to the county attorney, but I haven't received yep. it. Okay, I'm going to let you leave my voicemail then, okay? Just Th one second. Thank you. Jonathan Frieden, the Hubbard County attorney. I'm not able to uh, take your call at the moment. Please leave your name and number, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. You may start your message now. Press zero to return to the attendant. Yes, uh, Hubbard County attorney Jonathan Frieden. This is Terry Nemers, 320-283-5713. It's Wednesday, July 14th, 2021, 9.35 a.m. And I'm trying to figure out why you're Corey Ox, uh, the sheriff is harassing me over readily available free electronic information for this uh, information regarding the Animal Humane Society's critical response team and uh, the confidentiality agreements that you should be uh, signing, have signed for them. Plus, you know, the policies and procedure manual for your office and the Sheriff's Department. I would think all this would be readily available for electronic public information, but apparently uh, the Sheriff is having county uh, uh, employees print out public information and then uh, onto pieces of paper then rescan them into the computer in order to uh, justify a charge so uh, you know I'm just trying to figure out when uh, either you or the sheriff are going to provide me with uh, the justification pursuant to uh, 13.09 access to government data uh, let's see, and it's uh, section, subsection D of uh, subdivision 3D says the responsible authority upon request of any person, which is me, shall provide sufficient documentation to explain and justify the fees being charged because uh, apparently this information is right in front of the face of uh, your county employees and it apparently it takes uh, hundreds of dollars and hours and hours to figure out where this information is so uh, again are your uh, is this a harassment scheme a fraud or, or maybe your employees are drunk on drugs uh, you know have a debil debil debilitating strokes uh, I'm not quite sure that's why I need uh, the documentation to justify these uh, apparently fraudulent bills again Terry numbers 320-283-5713 oh and, and could it be that you don't have any uh, confidential agreement signed. Is that why I'm being harassed? Thank you. Terry Nemers. Bye now. Hello. Yes, hello. Jonathan Frieden here, Hubbard County Attorney. Is this uh, Terry? This is. Hey, I'm giving you a call back regarding your message. Uh, I, I did see some emails come through in the last week or two. Does that sound about right? As that as sounds a about right. Yep. yep, yep. Okay. Um, and from your message, it sounds like you're accusing law enforcement staff of being on drugs or having medical problems. No, I was asking if they were having medical problems uh, why or do you some sort of. They would be. Well, because uh, I get this fraudulent bill for an exorbitant amount of money for looking on the staff's computer when the information's right in front of their face. And I okay. asked and for the just... Let me just stop you, and let me explain to you why that is the case, why you're getting a bill. I will say that it's very offensive the way that you said that. If you don't understand why that's offensive, I, I can't explain why it's offensive to you. It's, it's on its face offensive. That being said, the reason why it takes time and energy from staff, from the law enforcement office, who is their own data... Uh, responsible authority 
um, is because some of the data in the well, well hold, hold on they're their own responsible that, authority that 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 county employee is their own no response the sheriff's department is Corey Aukis is the responsible oh okay well there you go and not, I mean, not, in the context of the county as a whole I also in my office am the responsible authority for the county attorney's office the administrator is the overall county responsible authority and then there's uh, the um, over at the highway department the county engineer is his own as well well you Which see if, if, if you I'm, see if you would have you, you would have sent me your data practices uh, manuals like I asked you to I'd understand online. all that see online. but you you didn't Actually, you can just look it up on Google Hubbard County data practices is on there well actually you uh, need to even ask for it. and if you did ask for it we would say go to the website that's where it is so in other words you just tell me to go to hell is what you're saying no I'd say it's a readily because, available because on the website you don't have to pay any money to get it it's right there go ahead and get it well uh, how come you can't email it to me email Be you the data practices policy by Hubbard County yeah how hard is that well, you can ask the administrator to do so. It's, I'm not the responsible authority for the county as it relates to all the policies that are there. To the point of you saying that our uh, law enforcement employees are, are potentially on drugs, um, they are... No, no, I asked. I, I asked. See, years. this is the thing. You keep on switching what I said. If you read the email, I asked if they had a, a, a medical... That you had. Excuse me? But yeah. You left me a voicemail saying that. Well, It wasn't an email. Well, I sent an email. It's in your possession. You admitted getting emails here. I asked a question. Is there is there a need to have a, a, a wellness check on these staff because they... You don't they, understand why that's offensive? Well, maybe you think it's offensive. I don't care. I think I don't appreciate being harassed. You understand? I don't like getting uh, malicious and frivolous bills sent to me electronically. When and I'm trying to find out if your staff are misusing public resources because apparently they're printing off electronic information onto pieces of paper, rescanning it into your computer in order to justify some is. huge fee. You, you understand? They're doing it because they're required to by law because they can't provide you the security data that's part of it, so they have to redact it, and that takes time. Uh, by printing it off on pieces of paper? To print it off, redact it scan it back in and send you the redacted copy. Do you use a, we have a Do you use Adobe Acrobat professional software? Yes or no? We do not. You don't. How we do, do you not have access to a program to electronically redact? No. Okay, well, I'm I'm Might trying to figure out I'm it. trying to figure right. out how you're in compliance with court rules then because the court rules specifically state that all your data has to be submitted in searchable PDF format. That's not true. Well, actually, the ones the information I'm requesting is, see, uh, I can I actually cited it in my request there. So again, I'm confused I that because I disagree that there's a court order or there's a court rule or a court sta or a statute out there that requires that we keep all of our data in electronic form at all times. That is just not true. And well, it's definitely not security data. Well, first of all, are your uh, what software do you use for your own office to do your complaints? We use a program that is only for county attorney offices. Well, I understand that I need the name of it, though, because I'm going to ask okay. you a specific question in regard to that specific program. Okay, we use MCAPS. It's a collaborative. Oh, okay, because I have all sorts of contracts for that. So uh, I'm going to make a request to you right now because uh, according to the statute it says upon request. I'm requesting a copy of that contract for your software because uh, I have reason to suspect it's similar to the other contracts I have which makes it clear that your information uh, has to be in compliance with the court rules and Minnesota Data Practices Contract Act. Is gonna say that? Excuse me? You think the contract that I have with the MCAPS uh, collaborative says that I have to have it in electronic form? I mean, almost nothing I have in my office is is subject to Chapter 13. I'm, I'm uh, uh, so do you, do you have a policy and procedure manual? Yes, we do. Oh, oh, because I have a whole I have have a whole catalog of other county attorneys' policies and procedure manuals, and now you're telling me that uh, I can't even get that when I have a whole 
Uh, okay. I never said you couldn't get my my procedural and policy manual. I just haven't had a chance to get it to you yet because. I'm oh, okay. Well, I that just need that clarification then. See, you, because no, you you're calling about the sheriff's department issue, which I'm telling you the reason why it's going to cost you money to do it is because of security data, and the reason you can't get the information on the investigation that you want is because under Chapter 13, data that is an open investigation that is not hasn't been sent or hasn't been charged yet is not public data. Well, I never asked for anything that was public information. I asked for the public portion of it, which is public. There isn't any public portion oh, uh, of so the So the, the ICR number isn't public information? The ICR number itself, I suppose you could get, but your, your email was not clear on that whatsoever. Well, I, I do asking, believe I... I remember, you can call over to, and talk to Carol right now and she'll give you the ICR. You just can't get well, any of that data that's in there. Well, uh, so I can call over to her, and she can give it to me over the phone, but she can't email it to me. You could, you, she'll email you the ICR. You didn't ask for the ICR. You well, actually, I did. I asked for the public portion of the initial complaint report for the incident involving the, the uh, 57 dogs involving the Minnesota Animal Humane Society uh, Task Force, or whatever it is. Don't remember it is, what the what their little uh, name is off the top of my head. Well, like I said, I, I wanted to call and explain to you why it costs money. There's a good. Well, uh, again, I'm trying to figure out it the is, does the sheriff's department like policy and procedure problem, manual. I don't have anything else for you other than I will uh, go back through my emails here now that I. Well, I'm not sure if I'll have time here this afternoon. But get your policy and procedure manual. It's pretty straightforward. You're not going to see anything bizarre about it. It has nothing to do with the case that you're looking into. I, well, who said I was? I want that information in your policy and procedure manual. I want to see what your policy and procedure manual is, so I can see if if you are actually because you admit that this is an open case, and I want to see if you're. Uh, it's an active case. Agreed. Okay. Well, good. I'm happy about that. I want to see if your Animal Humane Society critical response team has confidentiality agreement signed do not, they or don't? I don't we don't have a, res, a critical response animal humane society response team we may have been the sheriff's department may have been working with one. Oh, okay have, well have well that's what i'm asking for because pursuant to yeah, minnesota yeah that's why we can't give you because they, we don't have one well yeah well if you let me finish a sentence here see according to minnesota statute 343.01 it says you have to have a signed appointment with the uh, Animal Humane Society's critical response team in order for them to engage in an investigation and assist in law enforcement to empower them uh, to uh, help them with the prosecutions. I, uh, fair enough. Good luck with that. You should probably do something about that. Huh? No, no, no. See, that's what I'm asking. Did you authorize these people to have this confidential criminal investigative data that they were uh, gathering while they were helping you in your prosecution because your policy and procedure manual should clearly state that no one from your office or someone that you authorize to assist you in any criminal investigation is authorized to release that information to the public. Thank you for that advice. I really appreciate it. No, I'm asking you. Else? I'm asking you. Have you signed the policy, the confidentiality confidentiality agreement, which forces these people to get your permission to release that information or not? Who, who, and what? I, that question doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know. Uh, what okay. Do you have confidentiality confidentiality agreements uh, that you make people sign with the county? Yes or no? Not in my office. Well, I should say that there is a there's some drug cases that we sometimes do, but nothing related to animal neglect or animal cruelty. No. Oh, I'm so, not so, in the county attorney's office. I can't tell you county wide. I don't control every every other department. So the the sheriff's department doesn't have make uh, someone like the uh, some organization like the Animal Humane Society sign a confidentiality agreement when they're when they're assisting in criminal investigations. I do not know. I could not You're answer. the county attorney. How is that possible? Because I'm not the elected sheriff. I'm the elected county attorney. Well, you do the, you do the prosecutions I, yeah, for I the case, correct? To, to the sheriff, but I do not do his job for him. Uh, I didn't ask you to do his job for him. I asked you if you know 
if these people are signing confidentiality agreements. And so I they are. Answered. I said I do not know. Well, I, again, I'm trying to figure this out because you're responsible for the criminal prosecution. Sure. And if evidence is being illegally released by the sheriff through his uh, agents here, uh, the Animal Humane Society's critical response team, I, I think that would damage your case, correct? I disagree. I don't think that, I don't, I mean, obviously if it's illegally obtained, that's problematic and I can't use it, but I disagree with your premise, I should say. So these people can bring in... You're starting with the premise that they're illegally obtaining information. Well, if they don't have a confidentiality agreement, how are they, how are they on the scene of a of a uh, crime scene. I disagree, I disagree that it's outright required. You disagree? Yes, I do. So Minnesota's... You can, you can quote statute all day long, but when law enforcement goes out and investigates an animal neglect or animal cruelty case and they collect evidence and they use the assistance of lay witnesses, they use the assistance of a veterinarian, they are not required to have confidentiality agreements signed by every person that they use whether it be an expert or a lay person, an eyewitness that saw something. Um, there is no statute that requires that. That is not illegally obtained information. That is information that I can use at, in the trial or in the prosecution of the case. I, I don't know where you're getting the idea that there has to be a confidentiality agreement signed, um, but I disagree in, in the cases that you're bringing up that they were outright required. I just don't believe that. Well, again, that's what I'm trying to get the, the Sheriff's Department Policy and Procedure Manual, which apparently you want to print off onto pieces of paper and then scan Acting back for into... For redacting the, purposes. Excuse me? Security data problems. Yeah. The Policy and Procedure Manual for the Sheriff's Department. You know what? It might not be that. That was the issue. I can't recall. I was talking to Carol. There was something that was going to be about... It was over a 1,000 pages, um, and there was, a, there was a, a large portion of it that was security data under 13... Um, 37, and they couldn't give it to you. They're not, they just can't give security <coughs> to the public. Well, uh, again, I was never asking for confidential information. I was asking for all public you information. You might not have known in your request. Uh, I, I've submitted right. data requests That's for all, about a decade, and I think I know what the what I'm asking, what I'm not asking for. I'm not sure exactly. In your email, it was a little unclear to me exactly what you were looking for. Um, well, okay, yeah, uh, frankly, I'll read it here. Right. Number, it says number three, Hubbard County Sheriff's Department Policy and Procedure Manual, Custody Manual, and Prisoner Handbook. I think those are oh, pretty sure. specific things. Yeah, there's going to be some security data in those. Yeah. Oh, 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 security data. So, yeah. so again, this is where I'm confused because I'm not it's, sure why. If you've been doing this for a while. Well, uh, again, uh, if you let me before. finish my sentence here, because in the huge catalog of all the uh, of policy and procedure manuals from one end of the state to the other of sheriff's departments, there's uh, policies about policy manuals, which says that uh, a person who uh, has a job there is required to receive a policy manual, acknowledge receipt of the policy manual, acknowledge receipt of any uh, 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 updates of the policy manual sign a, a document acknowledging that and then make sure the the responsible authority like it would be the sheriff uh, has a copy of that in his possession so again I'm trying to figure out how it's possible it takes hours for county I already explained why. county officials can't find their own policy and procedure manual What's, well, they know where it is it's just a huge policy and procedure manual it's uh, okay well uh, again if they signed it they said they they know what is in it then they should know what is should be redacted and what shouldn't be redacted to Agreed. start with it still takes time to do so uh, okay so they know what's in there so then uh what what policies uh, there should be a list of policies which need to be redacted so what are those policies i need to know those so i can compare those to the other policies and procedure manuals from the other sheriff's department from one end of the state to the other you know so i can see if this is a legitimate uh concern or not and, and i'm trying to figure out what would be the the security problems in a prisoner handbook because if you look at chapter 13 under 13.37 where it talks about security data. It doesn't say the requester of the data gets to determine whether or not 
data determined to be security data should be determined and that's what you're asking to do you want to uh, no 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 that's that not it what i'm doing here authorities job to make sure that they don't provide security data well well again when they uh, redact it you don't get to know what's in it well, uh, I, again, I'm trying to figure out why they need to print out the whole Sheriff's Department policy and procedure manual. they can. They don't have a computer program to electronically redact. That's why. Oh, okay. Well, uh, again, I, I'm trying to figure out why. Let's say the Sheriff's Department's, for, for sake of argument here, you said 1,000 pages. Let's say the Sheriff's Department's policy and procedure manual is 1,000 pages, which I don't believe. But well, let's just say it for the sake of argument that it is. Why are you printing out a thousand pages of it instead of the appropriate section? Because you asked for the entire manual. That's why. Oh, uh, okay. So, so all the parts that aren't. You did ask for. You asked for the entire manual. Yeah, I did. Well, okay. Let's back up a little bit. Is this a Lexapol policy and procedure manual? I don't know. I I don't know what that term is. You don't know what that it, term is. Huh? Lexapol, yeah. It, it's, I don't know. It, it's what the Sheriff's Department's been using since 2008, I do believe. Good question for the Sheriff's Department. I do not. I well, don't. again, you're the county attorney here, and you're, you're, you're speaking for them like an expert. No. And, and I know that. You what the, I, I was talking to Carol about who well, was again, I'm, it, trying to assist you in getting your data. Um, well, it is. Very rude to her. And you can say that, well... I well, actually, I, well, I never spoke to your your uh, Carol to start with. I was always speaking to your sheriff. Her, um, with oh, well, okay. Well, see, now, and you need to be specific about what your, your, your accusations uh, you're tossing. If you want to know why it costs so much, it's because you've asked for a very large amount of data. And a lot of that data has confidential security or investigative data that you that we cannot legally give to you well i never asked for any of that so but but again you're making these wild and outrageous That's generalized true. statements here you won't give me any specifics like is this a lexapol policy and procedure manual and they're all they're they're generally pretty large documents well uh, again yeah. i i have yeah. i have a variety of law enforcement policies and procedure manuals from one end of the state to the other sure. so so again i'm very familiar with them and, and there's no, never been an instance where they said, oh, we got to print out the whole policy and procedure manual to redact these two pages here. See? Well, it's more, uh, well I'll just say that that's not what, that you asked for the entire policy and procedure manual. No, well, again, that's they what I'm trying to, to figure out. Off. They have to redact every page that needs to be redacted. And then, well, oh, how many pages are you, how many pages are you going to redact? That's what I really need to know. Is, is, is it two? I that question. Well, again, uh, that's why if you tell me if it's a Lexa, what's going on. if you tell me it's a Lexapol policy and procedure manual, then I know you're lying through your teeth because the the Lexapol policy and procedure manual is an online policy and procedure manual, which is clearly spelled out in the policies and procedure manuals that I have in my possession. So I know that it can be easily redacted online. So uh, again, you sound like a really smart guy that knows a lot of stuff in this particular case. It will take them a while, and it will take them time, and you can either pay the cost. Or well, you can, well, again, that's why. No, or you can I already told you request. I need the justification pursuant to state statute. The statute. No, you didn't do that. You you had to spell out specifically what the reasons are, why you need to print out the entire policy and procedure manual instead of specific policies. See, if some policies are so filled with this security data that you can't give it to me, then I need to know what the title of that policy and procedure uh, section is so I can, again, review it, uh, compare it to other policy and procedure manuals that I have in my possession. So uh, how much redaction do you need to do to your general policy and procedure manual and your prosecutor's policy and procedure manual? I haven't looked at it. I, my guess is not very much, if any. You, you don't know what's in your own policy very, and procedure manual? But you've asked for, for the Sheriff's Department, the jail policy, which is highly, has almost all security data in it. Uh, almost um, all security data. Wow. It's a jail policy manual. What did you, I mean, what would you expect that to be stuff that, that um, inmates should know? Well, uh, again, I have prisoner handbooks 
from one end of the state to the other. I have custody manuals from one end of the state to the other. I have policy and procedure manuals from one end of the state to the other. So, you know, so again, I'm just trying to figure out how yours is so filled with this security information where I've never experienced this before. I'm trying to figure out how you've never known this before, given you've been doing this so long. Well, uh, security again, security data is is very very prevalent when you ask. Well, okay, give me an example of security uh, security data. Is it like a combination well, combination of a safe or something? Incident, how they would respond to a uh, like their policy manual on how to respond to a particular type of incident, for instance. Uh, like how to open a safe and it gives the 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 combination of the safe. No, how law enforcement would respond to a particular type of incident. Well, okay, like, well, like what? Like a jail riot, for instance. Let's oh, okay. Like that's security data. You, the public, you can't get that in a data request. Well, you know what? I've never seen that in a policy and procedure manual to start with. So uh, I'm surprised by that. If you well, because they, they take that years. they take that section out. See, yeah, they, they it's called it's called redaction. Which is why it, I, I've already explained why the cost is what it is. Well, again, I'm trying to figure out how. It, you, you're two hundred dollars for something that you already know where all this sensitive information is, and I would think. Uh, so, am, am I the yeah, only person? Am I the? Like, let me ask you this: Am I the only person? I am I the see. only person who's ever asked for the Hubbard County Sheriff's Department Policy and Procedure Manual? I couldn't say. I don't. You, you couldn't say because I'm thinking that you know this gets you get a request for this on a regular basis, so. Uh, apparently, I'm the only person who's ever asked for it in the history of of the Harbor County Sheriff's Department. You might be. I don't know. It's possible. So, so, so I get to have this uh, two hundred dollar an hour <laughs> because apparently they can't even find the policy and procedure manual. So, so they got to look for it first, and then they don't they don't even remember what they signed their. Uh, you can keep saying stuff like that. It's not true. You've been very rude throughout. You were rude in your message. You were very, very rude in your emails. You have a couple of options. If you've been doing this a long time, then you know you can either pay the money and get the redacted stuff, or you can challenge it, and you can ask a district court to agree with you. Um, either way, it's your decision. Good luck. Uh, a have dist- a great day. Uh, hold, hold on a second here. Are, are you still there? Yes. I'm okay. Oh. You, you're, you've been incredibly rude throughout. Well, I'm glad I recorded the call then. I'm so glad I recorded the call. Good. I, I, all I'm saying, and I don't have any problems with you recording. Our, 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 our calls are recorded as well. Well, good. Well, then I'm requesting my call that you recorded. So sure email enough. that to me. Email it to me. No, you can send it in writing as recorded. No, no. It says per state statute upon request. I'm requesting it. I'm recording the conversation. You say you're recording the conversation, so you have my request in your possession i have my request in my possession so email me the audio recording please okay see i was extremely polite i said please good luck to you sir Have thank a great you day. bye